The story begins by alternating between the lives of our two protagonists in Russia. First, there is Dominika Yegorova, a renowned ballerina responsible for taking care of her sick mother. After a visit to the doctor, Dominika leaves her mother with a caretaker so she can go to work. Once in the theater, she changes and puts on makeup before meeting the guests, which include her uncle Ivan Yegorova, deputy director of the Russian Secret Service. He introduces her to Dmitry Ustinov, a Russian gangster who asks her for a picture and takes the opportunity to touch her inappropriately. Moments later, the play begins, and Dominika is dancing beautifully when suddenly her dancing partner jumps and lands on her leg, breaking it. Dominika is immediately taken to have surgery. The other character we follow is Nate Nash, a CIA agent who is receiving a phone call from an automatic caller that dictates some words to him. He uses those words to decode the address of a meeting location, and he takes his gun with him before leaving. The chosen spot for the secret meeting is the park at night, and when he arrives there, he notices he's being followed by a car. An enigmatic man, codenamed Marble, is walking towards him as well, and Nate hands him something as they pass each other on the road before they continue as if nothing happened. The car is still following him, though, so to give the man a chance to escape, Nate creates a distraction by shooting the floor and starts running away as the car pursues him. He reaches town and is surrounded by the police just as he makes it to the American embassy. Inside, he meets with his superiors, who tell him the asset is safe, but Nate will still be sent back to the USA for his mistake. The next day, Ivan visits Colonel Zakharov, director of the Secret Service, in his office. General Vladimir Kortnoy is also there. They show Ivan a video of Nate's meeting at the park and mention he's a CIA agent who left the country that morning, but their main interest lies in the other man and finding out his identity. We cut to Dominica then, who is waking up at the hospital to find her leg in a metal frame, and she starts crying when she realizes she won't be able to dance again. Three months pass. Dominica, who is still walking with the aid of a cane, is visited by Ivan. He comments on the fact a replacement for her has already been found and how the theater had been providing them the apartment and covering her mom's medical expenses, all of which will stop soon, now that she doesn't work for them anymore. Ivan says he wants to help her and asks her to come to him when she's ready. He also leaves an envelope for her before leaving. Dominica opens the envelope and finds pictures that show her dancing partner has been romantically involved with her replacement, plus a recording of a conversation between them that implies he intentionally harmed her so his girlfriend could take Dominica's place. Later that day, we find Dominica in the theater watching her former partner and the new girl practice. After they're done, they go to the steam room and Dominica follows them, only to find them in a compromising situation. Rage takes over and Dominica starts using her cane to beat them both to the ground before running away. On the bus home, she sees her hand stained with blood and decides to get off stopping by a payphone to report what she did as an accident. When she arrives at her apartment, she finds her mom on the bathroom floor, the caretaker nowhere in sight. Her mom tells her she didn't come because the theater stopped paying her. Knowing she has no other choice now, Dominica goes to see her uncle to seek his assistance. He agrees, as long as she helps him return with a small case. The Secret Service wants to gather more information about Ustinov, whom Dominica had encountered at the theater. Ivan wants her to approach him, befriend him, and gain his trust using her charms. Dominica initially declines, but Yvonne persuades her by reminding her how dreadful state hospitals are and how he can provide her mom with the best doctors instead. That very night, Dominica goes to the hotel Ustinov is staying in, wearing the dress she's been given. She goes to the bar to wait for Ustinov to initiate a conversation, which he does. Dominica tells him she's come to see him, longing to feel special again. So they leave for her room. She asks the guards to give them privacy, and Ustinov starts undressing as soon as his men leave the room, then asks Dominica to do the same. She does so after some hesitation, and as she comes closer, Ustinov wastes no time in taking advantage of her. Their intercourse is suddenly interrupted when a man wearing a black helmet appears behind Houston off and slits his throat. The body is thrown on the floor, and after signaling for silence, the man tosses Dominica a coat for her to cover her blood-stained body and leads her out of the room through a back door. When they reach the parking lot, he shoots an employee before taking them on his bike and driving away to an abandoned building. Inside, the man takes off his helmet to reveal Sergei Maturan, another Secret Service agent sent by Ivan, who is in another room in the same building together with Courtnoy, 
observing Dominica on the security cameras. When Courtnoy mentions she's a witness and suggests eliminating her, Ivan remarks she could be useful. Ivan changes rooms to go see Dominica and confesses he did know what would happen in that room and didn't tell her because she wouldn't have done it if she knew. He makes her an offer then, saying that since she's so skilled at this, she can be sent to a special institution to be trained to be an agent. If she declines, he won't be able to safeguard her, so she can only agree. Dominica departs for the institution a couple of days later. Upon arriving, she's greeted by Matron, the headmistress of Sparrow's school. She provides Dominica with a fake name to use within the school before taking her to her room. Classes begin shortly after that, and Matron talks about the modern world being in chaos and how Russia is the only country willing to make sacrifices to rectify it. The students will be trained to be sparrows, spies who specialize in seduction and psychological manipulation. Dominica and a student named Victor are summoned to the front of the class and asked to disrobe. Victor complies without issues, but Dominica doesn't dare. Matron scolds her for it. We then cut to Nate, who's been summoned by the CIA's discipline panel to be informed he'll be suspended for his mistake in Russia, and he can't leave the country. Nate protests because their mole, Marble, has been working with Nate for three years and won't trust anybody else. But he isn't hurt. Back at Sparrow's school during a class with Matron, she tells them they need to be able to identify what their targets want. She puts some videos on TV, for examples, for them to work on. The first one Victor guesses incorrectly, and Dominica corrects him, earning her his dislike. The second is guessed by another female student who is called to the front of the class and told she will have to use her mouth on the man from the video who is brought into the classroom and cuffed. The girl gets on her knees but is incapable of doing it. She falls to the floor crying. Matron reminds all the students that they need to learn to trick their bodies and teaches them some basic seduction tricks. Back in the USA, Nate notices he's being tailed and informs his superior of this. He learns that the CIA hasn't heard anything from Marble, and he takes the chance to remind them he will talk if it's Nate that contacts him. They reach a deal. He can't still go back to Russia, but they can send him to a country nearby, so the Russian Secret Service will know he's around, and Marble will resurface. Nate accepts for the team to come with him. Meanwhile, in the school, the students are asked to give a welcome to a group of soldiers that just returned home from war. Dominica picks a young man and takes him to a room where she helps him with something. Later that day, Matron and the students watch videos of their performances with the soldiers. Matron tells Dominica her technique was good, but she needs to learn to be more open. After class, Dominica goes to the showers, where she's confronted by Victor. She defends herself by using the water tap from the wall. Meanwhile, Ivan, Korchany, and Zakharov are discussing the fact that Nate has been relocated to Budapest. They want to do something about it but they know the president doesn't want them to do anything that could be seen as negative towards the USA. Ivan suggests giving the mission to someone else. Back at the Sparrow School, Matron and a newly arrived court noy question Dominica about her actions towards Victor. Matron believes Dominica still has potential, while court noy asks for a private moment with her. After everyone else leaves the room, he questions Dominica again, and she explains that she is loyal to the state not her classmate. She's allowed to return to class, where Matron once again calls her to the front while Courtnoy watches from a security camera. Dominica is shown a picture of Victor and asked what he wants as he enters the room. Matron orders her to give him what he wants. Victor asks her to turn around. Dominica refuses and gets into action. As she undresses, he tells Victor to look at only her, and once she's completely naked, she sits on the table with her legs open, egging him on to take her. Victor can't get it up and runs away when she teases him for it. Then Dominica answers Matron's question. What he wants is power. Courtnoy is impressed. Moments later, Matron meets with Dominica in private again and tells her she'll be sent back to Moscow. Days later, while reuniting with her mom at their place, Dominica receives a call that tells her to meet Ivan at a restaurant. When she makes it there, she sits with him and he explains her next mission. She'll be sent to Budapest to befriend Nate and gain his trust so she can learn the identity of their mole. He gives her a new passport and documents with a new name. Dominica leaves without eating. She makes it to Budapest a couple of days later and goes to stay at an apartment she'll share with a fellow Sparrow Martin. Later that day, she meets with her new boss, Station Chief Maxim Volontov, and asks him for some information on Nate. Afterwards, she follows Nate around to learn his routine. The next day, Dominica starts going to the same swimming pool as Nate and lets him go to her when they leave the building. 
They chit-chat a bit, but Dominica plays hard to get. She also makes up a story about being a translator for the embassy. The following day, however, she doesn't find Nate at the pool, and the receptionist tells her her ID has gone missing. Turns it out, Nate already knows she isn't what she says. We cut to him explaining to his superiors that she's been using many names and making the connection to Ivan. He thinks she's valuable, and that her using her real name is a provocation. After some hesitation, his superiors allow him to get closer to her to gather intel. After going to Volontov to report her progress and ask for an embassy pass, Dominica visits the embassy and sees Marta chatting with Stephanie Boucher, an American politician. Nate interrupts her, staring to chat, admitting he was the one to steal her ID from the pool, and asks her out to dinner the next day at 8. Dominica agrees before leaving. Back in her apartment, Dominica searches Marta's room and discovers she's been buying intelligence from Boucher. Marta returns home then, but doesn't catch her in the act. She gives Dominica a copy of the report Volontov sent to Moscow. Apparently, Dominica has made an enemy. The next day after work, she follows Volotov into a bar and asks him to give her more time with a better report, then provokes him into reacting by making fun of his size. His aggressive response is now captured on the security cameras, and Dominica tells him he'll write a better report or she'll take the recording to the police. While all this is happening, Nate is alone in a restaurant, waiting for his date. Thinking he's been stood up, he leaves the place, but Dominica is following him closely. Back in his apartment, Nate receives another coded message on the phone that he quickly writes down and deciphers. It says, Vienna. He's about to leave when a crying Dominica rings his bell. He allows her to come in. While sharing some whiskey, Dominica tells him his boss assaulted her. When Nate asks her how she knows where he lives, she raises the volume of the TV to ensure they can't be overheard. Dominica asks him what happened in that park in Russia and kisses him after he tells her. Nate tells her to go home and figure out what she wants. The next day, Ivan visits Dominica before leaving for Vienna. He asks about her progress with Nate, since their superiors are getting impatient. To buy more time, she lies and tells him she's also working with Marta on her voucher case. But she'll need more money. Ivan agrees and asks for his coat to leave. Dominica gets it for him, but not without discreetly taking a peek at his passport. After he's gone, Marta approaches Dominica with her gun. She overheard the lie and is angry because the voucher case is supposed to be only hers. Dominica promises she'll give her all the credit and more money. She just lied for the extra time. Marta only accepts because she has no other choice. Later on, Dominica goes to Vienna and opens a bank account there while Marta visits Volontov to inform him that she knows how to get rid of Dominica. Dominica returns to her place that night and finds Marta murdered in the bathtub. Suddenly, Sergei appears behind her and grabs her by the neck to give her a warning. This is what happens to those who share secrets. He also tells her to call the police before he disappears. We cut to Nate there, who is reporting to his superiors about having met with Marble in Vienna. Marble has given him some files confirming Dominica is a sparrow, which makes Nate believe she's even more recruitable. Meanwhile, Dominica is being interrogated by the police, but she tells them nothing. When she leaves the precinct, she finds Nate outside waiting for her. They go back to his place where he confesses he knows she's a sparrow. Dominica tells him her story in return, emphasizing that she only cares about her mother's well-being. Nate asks her to be a double agent for him, promising her protection. She replies she needs to sleep. He gives her his room. Later in the night, she leaves the room and joins Nate on the couch. After asking if she can trust him and receiving a positive answer, she makes love to him. The next morning, after confirming she accepts his deal, Dominica goes back to her routine, writes a fake report on Nate saying she has him under her control, and then returns to her place to wait for his signal, which is a simple phone call that plays her favorite song. Dominica meets with Nate's superiors and is put through a lie detector test to see if she can be trusted. When they accept her, she asks for money. They laugh at her, but they change their minds when she tells them she can provide them with a voucher. The following Friday, the whole team flies to London to meet with Voucher. Dominica stays in a special hotel room that the CIA prepared for her, complete with security cameras to monitor her, and a set of discs hidden under a desk to swap for the real ones later. Moments later, while she's at the bar waiting for Voucher, she's surprised by the sudden appearance of Volotov, who supposedly wants to help. Dominica sends him to her room to avoid scaring Voucher off. Voucher arrives shortly afterward, and Dominica approaches her, claiming that Marta sent her. 
Boucher is hesitant about this change, but Dominica convinces her to stay by, subtly threatening her with some compromising pictures and mentioning the money. Both women go to Dominica's room, where Volontov is waiting. Boucher hands over the discs in exchange for the money, and Dominica pretends to take the discs to her computer to verify their authenticity while secretly swapping them with the CIA's copies. Dominica and Volontov leave afterward, instructing Boucher to wait an hour before leaving as well. However, Boucher becomes anxious and drunk, so she leaves shortly after. On the street, she realizes she's being followed and gets scared, causing her to throw the money in a trash can and attempt to escape. Tragically, she is hit and killed by a truck. Dominica is in a car with Volontov when they receive the news, and he quickly informs her. They are ordered to return to Moscow immediately, and Volontov takes her passport. Once they reach Moscow, Ivan takes possession of the discs from Volontov before arresting him. Both Dominica and Ivan are under suspicion of assisting the Americans. Despite being subjected to different forms of torture, Dominica refuses to give in and denies any involvement. They even show her a video of how Volotov was shot for lying, but when the interrogator threatens her, she continues to lie fearlessly. Ivan then takes over, and Dominica skillfully manipulates him into protecting her. She's allowed to return home, but when she gets there, she feels so dirty that she can't let her mom hug her. After a difficult meeting with Kortnoy and Zakharov, Ivan returns to his apartment where Dominica is waiting. He informs her that her request to continue working on Nate has been granted. Before leaving, she kisses him. Dominica goes back to Budapest and meets with Nate. They go to his apartment where he expresses his suspicions about her quick release. Dominica persuades him to move her and her mom to America and increase her financial support. He agrees before they become intimate. In the middle of the night, Dominica wakes up upon hearing a noise. She heads to the kitchen to find Sergei torturing Nate. Initially, she pretends to support Sergei, assisting him in hurting Nate to extract the mole's identity. However, when Sergei becomes distracted, she retaliates and helps Nate free himself from the restraints. A brief scuffle ensues, but it doesn't last long, giving Dominica an opportunity to stab him. The next day, she regains consciousness in the hospital, steps out for a smoke, and encounters Korchnoi, who reveals that he is marble. He fears imminent capture and doesn't want his efforts to be in vain. He requests Dominica to expose him, allowing her to become a national hero and take over as the new mole. Although she doesn't give an immediate answer, she eventually checks on Nate and departs as well. She turns herself in to the authorities and demands to see the Russian ambassador. When brought before him, she instructs him to call Zakharov and inform him that she possesses the identity of the mole, which she will disclose in exchange for her freedom. The meeting is arranged later that night at an airport. Nate accompanies her to verify the mole's identity, with a warning that any attempt to escape will result in her being shot. Nate is upset, believing he was used by Dominica, but he is in for a surprise. As the Russians present the alleged mole, they remove the bag from his face, only to reveal that it's not Korchnoi, but her uncle Ivan, who has been framed by Dominica with fabricated evidence since her first trip to Budapest. Nate quickly catches on and confirms that Ivan is the actual mole. After the exchange, Ivan is shot dead by a Russian sniper and Dominica is flown away in a helicopter. Back in Russia, she is hailed as a heroine and is granted a good life with her mom. The movie concludes with her receiving a phone call and the only sound on the line is her favorite song.